I must have been a horrible sight because here I am po pointing an AK-7 at him and I'm drenched with blood from carrying the wounded. He gets out of the cab and I says, uh, we're, we're federal agents. And the guy's looking at me like I'm crazy. And he says, you take him to the closest hospital because we've got five wounded in, the, in that Ram Charger. He says, okay. And, he's, and I say, and I'm gonna take your cab. And he said, where are you taking your, my cab? And I said, don't worry about it, but I'll, give, I'll bring it back to you, don't worry. So I told GM, he's gonna take you to the hospital. I'm gonna go back to the scene. I can't leave my men back there under heavy fire. I, I gotta go back over there. So he takes off with the uh, taxi cab driver, giving him directions. And I return back to the ranch where the shootout is still going on. There's still a lot of intensive fire going on between both groups. And as I pull up, everybody stopped shooting. It was quiet all of a sudden because everybody's wondering who's showing up here in a cab. And I get out on the, I get out on the, on the passenger side and I yell at my guys, hey guys, it's me. And as soon as the traffickers realize it's me or one of us, they mow down that whole cab. I mean, they, that cab must have taken 60 rounds. I mean, they, they blew out the tires, they blew out the windows. I mean, it was all shot up. And so then I started shooting from behind the, the, the taxi cab and the guys after a while were lighting cigarettes because this is taking forever. This shoot out almost, almost three hours long. And the guys are, you know, like, uh, they're telling me, hey boss, come on over and shoot the shit with us over here. And I'm saying, I, you know, I can't go down. I can't run towards them, I'll get mowed down. Uh, so basically we were there and uh, about an hour later, and by then there was more sporadic fire because everybody's worried about running out of ammunition. Finally, the, uh, the Mexican army shows up and uh, of course we started, you know, lobbing grenades and everything at them and, and everybody came out with the white shirts and every, everybody gave up, those that were still alive because they were dead on their side. Luckily, we, we suffered no, no, no casualties. I mean, we had wounded, but no, nobody died. And um, so we, 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 we took over and arrested everybody and picked up the dead. And right as we were getting ready to clear, I remembered the guy at the silo. And I said, there's a guy out there, I want him. So I went underneath the silo and I said, hey, you, calm down. But I couldn't see him because it was dark. So I fired up a whole, a whole 60 round clip brrr, up the silo and all of a sudden this guy fell down. But he wasn't dead, he was alive. And uh, he was going, ay, 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 like that, because I shot him in, in, in the leg. And uh, so I picked him up and I says, I almost forgot you, you were trying to kill me, I told him. But uh, anyway, uh, we, 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 we arrested him. We seized uh, a ton of coke and 20 tons of marijuana. And we cleared the area. We picked up everything to include the, uh, the taxi cab and we took everything, hauled everything back to the DA office in Mazatlan. Forgot about the cab and about two weeks later, the owner of the taxi driver, I don't know how he found me, but he found, he knew we were DEA and he found uh, the office at, at the consulate. And he said, Senor, he said, um, my cab, you said you were gonna give it back to me. And I said, yes, yes, it's yours, I said. I said, but I don't know if you want it, it's all shot up. So I took him to the impound lot and I showed him and I showed him his cab and I said, see, it's no good. He said, what's it worth? And he said, $7,000. It wasn't worth 2,000, but I wasn't gonna argue with him. I said, okay, if you say, I don't believe it's worth 7,000, but if you say 7,000 and I get permission from my boss to pay you that money, I'll pay you that money. I went back to the office, I called Mexico City, the embassy, and I talked to the country attache at Heath and I said, remember I told you that I had commandeered a cab? And he goes, yeah. He said, well, the owner's here. He, I, I, he, he doesn't want it anymore. He, wa he wants us to buy it from him. And he says, how much money does he want for it? And I said, seven grand. He started laughing. He says, this is not worth seven grand, but give it to him. I said, okay. So I gave him the $7,000 and he walked out very happy. About a month or two later, he comes back to the office and he says, senor, he says, uh, he says, uh, I haven't bought a taxi cab and I sure like to buy, buy my, ta my taxi back, I'll fix it. And I go, okay. He says, what would you sell it to me for? He says, let me call my boss and find out what, what uh, he wants me to sell it to you for. So I call my boss in Mexico City, Ed Heath again, and I say, Ed, 
the guy wants to buy the cab back, what do I do? <laughs> he, he said, sell it back to him. And I said, he's not going to want to pay no seven grand. He said, we'll see what he'll give you for it. Take whatever. He said, don't worry about it. I said, okay. So I go back to the guy and I said, okay. He said, my boss says, I can sell it to you. He says, how much did you give me for it? He said, I'll give you 3500 for it. And I said, done deal. I'll take 3500 But I said, you cheated me. That cab's not worth 7000 Senor, he says, when I get to fixing it, it's going to be another $3,000 at least. And I got to fix it. Look at it. It's full of holes. And look at all the dry blood in it because there was blood in it too. And I said, okay, so go ahead and take it. And he took it. And right before I was evacuated of Mexico, I'm driving through Culiacan, the, the city there uh, in Sinaloa, and I run into him. He never fixed it. All he had was bond all over the holes. Of course, he fixed the windshields and he was driving it and I honked at him and I waved at him. But um, that's the story of uh, the shootout in the taxi cab in Mexico. Did you earn any medals for that? Well, yes, I, um, I received the uh, Attorney General's Award for Heroism for, for saving the uh, Mexican Federal Judicial Police. And I also received the Federal Bar Association. Um, um, well, that was the Medal of Valor. And the Attorney General's Award uh, was the Award for Heroism, which was, which was given to me at the White House, at the Halls of Justice at the White House by Attorney General Ed Meese. Uh, up to that point, I was the highest decorated DEA agent in the agency. I thought that my career was going to go very high in the DEA, and uh, everybody considered me, and I was known to be the shooting star that crashed. And I crashed after taking over the Camarena case, not because I didn't do my job, but because I did my job too well.